gospel reading for this Sunday is a reading from St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? And he answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And as he said, and he, and he said to him, you have given the right answer, do this, and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. And now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And so likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him. And when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back I will repay you whatever more you spend. And Jesus asked, Which of these three do you think was a neighbor? to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers. And he said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're now uh, launching into this uh, new series uh, as we begin uh, Lent 2016. We're, uh, and we're launching into this new series, a uh, preaching series and, and Bible study series and, and reading series. Uh, we're excited about that here. Uh, we think that it's going to be a meaningful experience uh, for you. Um, it is uh, uh, it's based on a book by Scott McKnight. It's called 40 Days Living the Jesus Creed. And it's actually based on a book that uh, Scott McKnight wrote just entitled The Jesus Creed. We have uh, some of these books still available that if you uh, want to pick up and, and join us in reading this uh, together, I think there's something powerful about a uh, group, uh, a whole church, a whole congregation, a whole community gathering and focusing uh, just on one thing. And, so if you're listening to us by way of our radio broadcast and, and you're interested in this series as well, we just invite you to uh, call the church office or stop by and our friendly staff here will see that uh, uh, we get you a book or uh, that we point you in the right direction uh, to get a book as, as well. So um, it is uh, based on a scripture passage that we just read uh, from the Gospel of Luke and uh, and, uh, and so part of our Lenten journey uh, this year is, uh, is reciting this, is memorizing uh, the scripture passage and then reciting it. Um, you know, our Bible study that meets uh, uh, Wednesday morning, we decided that we would do it uh, 83 times a day, just recite this. Uh, so we're going to, is that, I think that's what we decided. But we're going to just start by reciting it together. The words are uh, on the screen. So let's try it. Some of you I know, uh, I know you're overachievers, so you probably have already memorized this, but I know not everybody has. So uh, let's just practice this uh, together, all right? These, these words, they're off for you on the screen. Let's go. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. With all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, you shall love your 
in life. This is a series about what matters most in the world. And I think sometimes we receive gentle reminders in life about this. A baby is born and we see that helpless, unimaginable, precious life and we're reminded of this once again. Or when a couple stands uh, up here in a place like this and they declare their devotion to each other on their wedding day. By the way, do you remember that it is Valentine's Day today? So, uh, in case you forgot and you need a little gift, our Girl Scouts selling cookies. They make great Valentine's, all right? All right. So we're reminded when we gather for what? When we gather for weddings in places like this. We're reminded of, of this. When we hear about a soldier in battle laying down his or her life for their friend, we are reminded of this. Or when an elderly woman who has dementia is cared for by her husband day after day, Year after year, we are reminded of this. When a teacher keeps showing up in his or her classroom when all his other colleagues have gotten burnt out, and yet this teacher is in the classroom early in the morning meeting with students, this teacher stays late in the classroom to meet with those same students just to offer the extra care and support needed. And this teacher is, is, seems to be always full of energy and, and just passion for the sake of maybe just one child, maybe just one child whose life might be changed by his or her work. We're reminded of this. When a cold heart melts in a marriage that is headed for disaster, and now that relationship gets reborn, we're reminded of this. When somebody is dying and laying in a hospital bed, and they are surrounded by family and friends that they have shared life with, And we're reminded of this in these moments now. It's about this verse. It's about this verse that's right in front of us. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Love is what matters. Love is what makes a difference in your life and my life. Love is what makes a difference in this world. Love is real. Love is the measure of our humanity. Love is the purpose of our lives. And love is what God asks us to do. Now I know that we're still relatively in the new year. And uh, we all, I think, like to make resolutions when we are in the new year. We like to become better persons. So what is uh, the one resolution? The one, we make a lot of resolutions, but what is, I've been thinking about this, what is the one resolution that if you keep it, you know for sure that God would be pleased with you? What is the one resolution? I think the number one category for resolutions is, is getting what? In better physical shape, right? Getting we want we want to we want to be healthier people. We want we want to get in physical shape, better physical shape. In the Bible, the strongest, healthiest guy was Samson. And you know what? His life was a train wreck. It was a train wreck. He was in great shape. But his life was falling apart. Second most popular resolution is around, I would say, financial well-being, right? We want to have a good year, right? We want to have a, maybe this year we want our finances to be a little better this year than they were 
last year. So that's a, that's a very popular resolution. We want to get our finances in shape. Jesus told a story about a rich guy, and he had his best financial gear ever, Jesus says. More income than ever. He tore down his old barn so what? He could build bigger barns so he could build newer ones. But he ends up dying. And you know what God calls him? God calls him a fool. He didn't get it right. He was rich, but he didn't get it right. He wasn't focused on what matters. He wasn't focused on God's purpose for his life. A lot of people have goals around their career success, right? That's an important one. That's a good resolution. We want to be better at our careers. There's nothing wrong with that. The most successful guy around Jesus' day was a guy by the name of Herod. And you know what? He was successful, but he was a monster. He was just a plain monster. Sometimes we have educational goals, right? We want to we become smarter, right? So if I want to get smarter, I go to seminary from time to time. I read books because I really, I, I want to get smarter. I know that I can get a lot smarter. There's nothing wrong with that. But you know, the smartest guy in the Bible was a man named Solomon. And he ended up with a thousand wives. How smart was that? <laughs> I mean, can you imagine Valentine's Day for him? <laughs> well, what's the one resolution that we shouldn't miss? What is the one thing that we should never miss? Well, we looked at this not too long ago. Paul, in his letter, we'll put that up on the screen. Paul's letter to the Corinthians states, If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove bones, but do not have love, then I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. So here's a little equation we'll put it up on the screen here. So your life, you might have everything, but if you don't have love, you really have nothing. Everything minus love is nothing. But you know what? The reverse is true. You might not think you have much in your life, but the reverse is true. If you have nothing, but if you had love, then you see how the equation works. Then you have everything. Everything. So how about this resolution for Lent? I want to become a more loving person at the end of this six weeks period than I am today. That's what I want for myself. And you know what? That's what we want for the church. And I think that's what God wants. And I think that's what Jesus wants for the church. <clears throat> At least that's our hope for the church. At least that's God's hope for the church. So how about you? How about you? Nobody can make you do this, but how about you? Maybe you would want to make this resolution yours as well. How about, how about that? Now, if your goal is to be more physically fit, where would you go or what would you join? You join a gym, right? And you go over next door, right? And you'd get a pass and you'd, you'd find yourself in the gym and you'd get on the treadmill and you'd lift some weights. If you want more financial help, you might join an investment firm, right? To help you with that goal. If you want more career success, you might find a mentor. You might find somebody who really does well what you do. And just hang around that person and, and learn from that person. You, may, you might take some additional classes. But if you, if you want to grow in your capacity to love, where do you go? You're here. It's 
not a trick question. You're here. You're right where you need to be. You're right here in, in church. This is where you need to be. The place is right here. The whole purpose of the church is to increase the amount of love in our world. To make God's love known. We can't increase God's love, right? I mean, but there's nothing that we can do to make God love more or make God love less. But we can increase our response to God's love in us. And we can increase our response to God's love for and to the world. Now, 1 Timothy 1.5 says the goal of our instruction is love. The goal of our church is not a bunch of people who know a lot. Maybe you know a lot. Maybe you're really intelligent. You're looking really intelligent this morning. You know a lot. You might know a lot about the Bible, even. But you might know a lot about the Bible, but have not love. It says, and you are not. So the next passage, knowledge puffs up. But love does what? Builds up. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. So we're launching this series with this book, The Jesus Creed. So, so let's recite this one more time, shall we? Let's recite it here over to you. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. In one sense or another, all 
that are fraught with peril and danger, and at the same, same time with random and unforeseen kind deeds of love. We all, you and I, we walk that journey together. And we are all subject to the road and to the journey. And the appalling and the beautiful thing is that sometimes we find ourselves in the ditch bruised and bloody. And sometimes we see that another poor soul is there. And maybe that's the key to this oh so familiar story of Jesus and this love that Jesus is teaching us. The truth that each of us has the potential to be on the giving or the receiving end of this love. So doesn't it just make sense? Doesn't it just make sense to you? It makes sense to me. But does it make sense to you that we ought to be growing in this love? Because love is what matters most. So are you on board with me? Let's grow in this love and let's bow our heads in prayer. Thank you, most gracious God, for this idea of love, for this amazing gift of love. We know that there are hearts that are wounded. There are lives that are scarred and disappointed. There are hearts that are angry and bitter and confused. So we pray that you would help us to understand what love looks like. And that you fill our hearts with your love. So that where there are wounds, that you might be able to heal them. And we pray that we might be little beams of love, that we might be a little family where love just starts to radiate out of us and into our families and into our communities and into our churches and into our world. That we might be in our mouths, that we might be in our hearts, that we might be in our faces, all of love. That you would make this place a place where love 